Good morning and welcome to our daily Lenten devotional, continuing to read from our book, The Road to Emmaus. Christ in our midst. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 6 to 13. At the very beginning of Aylred's book, Spiritual Friendship, Christ is central. The book is written in the form of a dialogue between Aylred and several of his friends, Ivo, Walter, and Gratien. It begins with Aylred saying to Ivo, Here we are, you and I. And I hope a third, Christ, is in our midst. Aylred's emphasis on human friendship did not lessen the importance or indeed the centrality of Christ. Ivo was soon asking, I should like also to be instructed more fully as to how the friendship which ought to exist among us begins in Christ, is preserved according to the Spirit of Christ, and how its end and fruition are referred to Christ. Christ is, of course, at the center of all the Bethany stories. Traditionally, the woman in this story of Bethany has been identified with Mary Magdalene and with Mary, the sister of Martha. Scholars now separate the various Marys in the Gospel stories, and this is probably more accurate. But there is still something powerful about looking at the stories together. They show us a picture of a passionate woman who is not afraid to demonstrate her love of Christ publicly, anointing his head and his feet, sitting at his feet in the traditional place of a male disciple of a rabbi. She is not afraid of his physicality. Indeed, others are embarrassed and outraged by her extravagant love. She shows us how Christ's disciples are called to serve his body, not now his physical body, but his body in the church and the world. Christ is still present in the poor and the suffering, and his body can be honored when they are served and honored. Aylred characteristically writes of the centrality of Christ in language full of feeling. He speaks of how he was drawn from secular learning to the scriptures until he wanted to read only what had been sweetened by the honey of the most sweet name of Jesus. He is very creative in the titles by which he addresses Jesus and the biblical image, images he uses about him. A few of these titles give a flavor of his thought. Jesus is our physician, the wisdom of God, the poor one, strength, light, the author of creation, the Lord of the angels. His many images also bring out different facets of Christ. He is cloud a bracelet, the ark, the keystone, the sweetest of grapes, emperor, a mountain. Christ is at the heart of Aylred's faith and appears in every one of the sermons he preached at Rivaux. He alone in all, he writes in the Mirror of Charity, he alone above all, both captures our attachment and demands our love. He claims for himself a place in the abode of our heart, not only the most important place, but the highest. Not only the highest, but also the innermost. One way of allowing Jesus to have his place in the heart was to meditate on the gospel stories. Aylred taught this way of prayer, especially in a book written for his sister, who was living a solitary life. He gives her models of imaginative meditation for many gospel stories, from the Annunciation to the Resurrection, models in which she enters into the scenes she is contemplating, following the characters about, sympathizing with their feelings and reactions, and making their situations her own, so that their life becomes hers. The aim of such prayer, as of the friendship that he values so highly, 
is to bring the Christian into unity of spirit with Christ, mounting aloft through degrees of love to friendship with Christ. He has made one spirit with him in one kiss. The passionate nature of such an encounter with Christ is beautifully captured in his meditation on another of the anointing stories, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7. Now go into the Pharisee's house and see our Lord at his place at the table there, together with that most blessed sinner approaching his feet. Wash them with your tears, wipe them with your hair, soothe them with your kisses and warm them with ointments. Are you not already penetrated with the fragrance of that sacred oil? If he still will not let you approach his feet, be insistent, beseech him, raise your eyes to him brimming with tears, and extort from him with deep sighs and unutterable groanings what you seek. Let us pray. Beloved Jesus, come and dwell in my heart. Take captive all my desires and let all my love be focused on you. Be yourself the beginning and the end of all my activity, until I am at last united with you in one spirit. Amen.